All right, so when I think about finding equivalent fractions, ladies and gentlemen, we've done a lot of work with how to make equivalent fractions using multiplication. So can I have a volunteer give me a denominator that we can use? And I'd like the denominator in this particular example to be an even number. Yes? Eight. Eight, okay. And can I have a volunteer to give me a numerator? Again, an even number. Yes? Four. Four, okay. So what do we know about how to turn this into, uh, how to generate an equivalent fraction? How can we do that in this situation here? How can we do that? Yeah. To well, we could, and we're going to come to the idea of simplifying a fraction in about two minutes. Okay. But right now, I want to come up with an equivalent fraction. I'm going to give you guys a little hint as a refresher to you. What can we do to generate an equivalent fraction here? Yes? We could multiply it by a number. Yeah. Is there a rule of thumb as to what... Oops, what am I writing a four here for? I saw a four here. Is there a rule of thumb about what I multiply the numerator and the denominator by in order to get an equivalent fraction? Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm hearing different answers. Let's see. Who says no? Tell me what you mean by that. Uh, so it's like there's no certain number. Right. It's not like I have to do 4 times 3 or times 7 or times 2, right? I could pick whatever number I want. Yeah. But... There is kind of part of a rule about what you have to bear in mind when choosing those numbers. Do you want to remind us? Yeah. You can't make it like 16. I could, right? Why did I write 4 again? I'm losing it. I don't want to make it 16 because it's going to give me a really big number to work with, a big numerator and a big denominator. But the rule is that the numbers I multiply by have to be, yes? Right, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I have to use the, oh boy. I have to use the, what do we have to know about the number I use here and the number I use here? They have to be the same, the same. right. I have to use the same number. So I'm going to pick three, because why not? What's four times three? Twelve. Twelve. <coughs> and what's eight times three? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Is 12 24 equivalent to 4 eighths? Yes. yes. Yeah. And again, we know I can use whatever number I want. So, gee, let me try again here to make another equivalent fraction. Last time I multiplied by 3. Today, let's see. Now I'm going to multiply by, what do you think? Let's do, let's do 5. Let's do 5. 5 tends to be a nice number to multiply by. You get some nice friendly numbers to work with. All right. Well, what's four times five this time? Twenty. Okay. And what's eight times five? Forty. Forty. So can we say four eighths is equivalent to twelve twenty fourths, which is equivalent to twenty fortieths? Yeah. Those are equivalent fractions. Now, this is an important thing to remember because. What do you notice about the size of our numerators and the size of our denominators as we go further and multiply by bigger and bigger numbers? Yeah. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 4, 12, 20, 8, 24, 40. They're getting larger. Here's a question. I, wa I, don't, I want you to take time to think about this. Does that mean our fractions are getting bigger? Think about that one for a second. Are the fractions getting bigger? What do you think? No. No, right. Tell me more. Um, because because they, if they are equivalent, then that means the picture all, if they were all in pictures before, they would just all be the same because they right. would all be that. Right. They'd all be the same amount. All this means is I'm breaking it up into more parts, eight parts, 24 parts, 40 parts. And of those parts, I'm shading in or eating or whatever. Remember what we said about numerators and denominators. It's the part you're focusing on that you're talking about. 
I'm using more of those parts, it's still always going to be about this, or it's going to be exactly the same amount compared to the whole that's shaded or eaten or has pepperoni on it if it's a pizza, right? It's the same amount. We're just expressing it in more pieces and then more pieces that we are looking at, right? We can go in the other directions too. We can go backwards. And I'm gonna get a different color here. Whenever we make larger numerators and larger denominators, what operation are we using to generate our equivalent fractions? What operation are we using? Yeah. Multiplication. That's always going to give us a larger numerator and a larger denominator. We can also generate equivalent fractions by using an opposite operation. What would that operation be? If I want to generate a simpler fraction, something that's simplified, what operation can I use instead of multiplying? What operation? I'm going to use division, exactly. I'm going to divide by something to make this simpler. Now, remember how we said with multiplication, I can pick whatever I want. I can do times 2, times 3, times 8, times 274, whatever I want, right? When we're simplifying a fraction, you can't divide by just anything. Because can I do 4 divided by 3? No. No. Is 4 divided by 3 anything easy for us to work with? No. No. What could I divide by to make this pretty simple? What could I divide by? Uh, divide by two. I could divide by 2, yeah. And the trick is, you can't just look to see, can I divide 4 by 2? You have to also look at your denominator. Can I also divide 8 by 2? Yeah. Yeah, I can. So that's going to work. Remember, we know our rules. What you do to the... Bottom, 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 bottom. Right. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So in this instance, we know that we have to be able to divide not only the denominator by that particular number, but also the numerator. Can I divide 8 by 2, everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Can I divide 4 by 2? Yeah. Let's do it then. Okay. Well, let's see. What do you guys want to start with, numerator or denominator? Numerator. Numerator. Sure. It doesn't really matter. What's 4 divided by 2? 2. What's 8 divided by 2? 4. 4. So our answer is? 2 fourths. 2 fourths is equivalent to 4 eighths. Oh, but are we done? No. No. We could, div uh, we could divide even more. We can simplify in other yellow. ways. Let's pick Green. a color. Yellow. Green. No, yellow would show. Pink. Let's do a... Uh, Pink. Uh, pink would show up either. Well, let's do, let's do like a little mustard color. Yeah, no, what can I say? What can, what's something that I can divide four by that I can also divide eight by? What do you think? Four. Four. What's four divided by four? One. One. What's eight divided by four? Two. Two. What's my answer here? One half. So you'll notice we started off with four eighths as our starting fraction. And I was able to use multiplication to come up with equivalent fractions of 12 twenty fourths and 20 fortieths. And there could be tons of others. But I was also able to simplify that. I was able to simplify it to make two fourths or to make one half. All of these fractions are equivalent. equivalent, but a simplified fraction is when you've divided to give it a smaller digit in the numerator's place and a smaller digit in the denominator's place. You just have to make sure that they're still equivalent. Simplest form is when you've gotten to the place where you can't divide it anymore. So if we look right here for just a moment, hold on a second. Oh, right here, sorry. Let's look for a second at two-fourths for a moment. So we've got two-fourths. Could I simplify two-fourths <laughs> even more? Yes. Yeah, I could sit there. I could divide two by two. two and four by two. In fact, that's how I got one half, right? Yeah. So is two-fourths written in simplest form? No. No. Because I could always bring it back to one half. Now, can I simplify this anymore? No. 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 There's nothing I can divide by. Yeah, I could divide two by 
two, let's say, but can I divide one by two? No. Now, so th this is as simple as it gets. Um, when you're home working on this, a lot of your parents may call this, anyone know another term that we use for this? A term that you may have learned from your parents? Reducing, Reducing fractions, right. So the term that we use in class is uh, finding an equivalent fraction, or in this case, simplifying a fraction. The reason why we don't use reducing is when we think of reducing, we think of making it smaller and shrinking it. And in fact, we're not shrinking the amount. The fraction is still one half, and these are all equivalent to one half. But we're simplifying it into a way that's a lot easier for us to understand. Because when I look up here, 12 24ths, that doesn't immediately make me think of one half. You know what does immediately make me think of one half? One half, right? It's the, the simplest form. Now, we've got a, almost a rainbow of stuff going on up here. So oftentimes, you're not going to see it presented in such a complicated way. You'll just see something like take, let's say six ninths and you'll be told to write that in simplest form all right what do I do who wants to give this a whirl if I want to simplify this want to get us started uh, sure. um, I divide six by three and nine by okay they're both divisible by three <laughs> What's six divided by three? Two. Two. And what's nine divided by three? Three. Three. Two thirds. Have you simplified this fraction? Yeah. Is it in simplest form? Yeah. How do you know that what he did put it in simplest form? Because there are no other numbers that you can divide two thirds by. Yeah. I could divide two by something. Yeah. But I can't divide three by that same number. There's no other way to simplify this. So this is in simplest form. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oftentimes when you guys go to do this, this is all you're going to have to show. You're not going to have to draw a big elaborate thing where you come up with two equivalent fractions with larger numerators and denominators and two. Now, this, this was just to show it to you. Normally, you just have to do something quick and easy like that come up with one simplified version or simplest form. It's less overwhelming to see just a single thing on there. Sound good? Question? Did you say, like, what would you call reducing? Yeah, a lot of people call it, it's the same thing. It's the same process of turning it into a simpler form. It's just a different word for it. Like, you know how sometimes we use the word regrouping, but at home you may sometimes hear people talk about borrowing or carrying? Right? Same idea here. A lot of people used to call this reducing because you're kind of shrinking it down to smaller digits in the numerator and the denominator's place. We call it simplifying. But just so you know, if you hear the word reducing, that's why we do it. Sound good? Yes. Awesome. 